Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome back to the Matt VidPro channel. Let's start this off right. I've been asking this question a lot. Tell me, guys, what are your AI-focused predictions for 2024? What are we going to see this year? Personally, my bets are on a new stable diffusion model, GPT-5, and a continuation of the explosion of AI video that we saw in 2023. I'd love to hear your thoughts, but enough talk. Let's dive into today's topic. AI upscaling has been having a resurgence lately. It's been been around for a while now, but some new tricks of the trade have brought it back into the mainstream. It's mainly focused around Magnific AI, which we're going to talk about today, but Magnific AI has a serious problem. We'll get into it, but let's just talk about why upscaling is having this resurgence. Of course, what upscaling actually is, is you take some photo, typically generated with AI in our use case, and then you apply some upscaling to it, which allows you to zoom in and get a lot more detail out of your image. Essentially, it's taking your image and making it larger physically, more pixels. So you can see our original image here did not have all these details on the stake, but this new one, you can zoom right into the stake and get into the juicy pieces. Now, the reason that Magnific AI has been blowing up lately as an AI upscaler is because it does upscaling just a little bit differently. I'll go ahead and demonstrate this to you guys actually on the Magnific website. So here's an image that was originally generated by Dolly3. It's a decent generation actually, but you can see these people's faces are a just a little bit screwed up. They're not perfect. Magnific has the ability to actually correct these faces to some degree. Hers is a little screwed up, but his is a lot better. So Magnific has this ability to not only upscale the image to a higher resolution and bring out more detail, but actually creatively hallucinate more details as well. So that's something that we really haven't seen before, and it's really darn cool. In a lot of cases, it actually works out really, really well. Like this one has just added the perfect amount of detail to this goldfish's face. It looks very realistic, but if you take it too far, it can add too much detail to the goldfish's face and hallucinate some really gross things, some extra like nostrils that the fish just doesn't need. Magnific definitely has a learning curve, which would not be a problem if it was cheap, but here we come to the problem surrounding Magnific AI. Magnific AI is not cheap at all. For what you get from Magnific, the pricing isn't even slightly close to where it should be. Magnific's pricing is out there in space, man. Magnific AI wants a staggering minimum price of $40 per month to only do 200 normal upscales and 100 large ones per month. I mean, that is ridiculous. Most AI image generation sites for 30 bucks a month, actually $10 less, will give me infinite AI generation point blank period. The prices just go crazier from there. $100 a month for only 550 normal upscales and 250 large ones, and this is the best deal in quotes. It's 100 bucks a month, are you serious? So there's a huge problem here. I would almost never recommend anyone actually go out and purchase a Magnific plan. And here's why. There are legitimately a lot of really awesome free alternatives to Magnific AI. In fact, I did a whole video about it. For those of you who didn't watch that video, this website right here called Crea AI, currently at least, has a completely free upscaler that's very similar to Magnific's. You can see this thing could take a very blurry photo and hallucinate a lot of that detail back while maintaining a lot of the composure of the original. It works in a very similar way to the that Magnific AI upscaler, and this one's entirely free at the moment, like I said. However, this one does come with some caveats, which we discovered in that original video I made. Oftentimes, it will not have the same high fidelity that you can get out of Magnific while you're trying to maintain the original image. So your upscales might either look like this, which is a horrendous mess. Sure, it's very detailed, but it doesn't really represent the original. Or they'll represent the original, but not really be a great upscale as a whole. And a lot of times, because it's free, everyone's trying to use this at once, so you'll just end up with some generations that entirely fail, and the upscaling does take forever. You'll be sitting waiting for your upscales for a while. So here we come to the smoking gun of today's video. I've got something that sort of solves both of these problems, and it's entirely free, and it runs locally on your own machine at home. I can't believe I just found out about this, and it's also very future-proof, by the way. Today, guys, we're going to be looking at something called Upscale. If I move my head here, you can see it's spelt a little bit differently. Anyways, this is a completely free and open-source AI upscaler that runs locally on your 
machine at home fast and completely free with very low wait times because it's running on your own hardware. If someone came to me who was new to AI image generation and was looking for the best way to start upscaling their AI generated images with Midjourney, Dolly 3, etc., this is exactly where I would point them. On their website, you can see there's literally just a download button and there it is, download upscale. Not only does it support Windows, but it also supports Mac OS, Linux, and also they have a cloud model that's coming soon that will work on, you know, any device, even a Chromebook. And guess what, guys? It's a super easy install. A lot of this open source AI software requires you to go to a GitHub page and run through like a bunch of Python installing stuff. It's a big hassle. Check this out. Windows EXE installer, Mac OS, literally right on the Mac App Store. Linux has all of these different options as well, but this is super easy to use and is very impressive. Check this out, guys super simple just select the destination folder click install no extra bs going on at all it just installs it for you you have got to appreciate this level of completeness and simplicity for something completely free and open source this is the kind of stuff that really benefits the community absolutely love it so here's the interface yes i'm going to show you guys around it and show you how to upscale your mid journey dolly 3 images etc and how to get the most out of this thing but we do have to talk about what kind of computer you need to actually run this thing you can see on the github faq section do i need a gpu for this to work now if you don't know what a gpu is don't sweat it i'm going to show you how to check if you actually have one but yes you do need a gpu a vulcan compatible one so a quick test to see if our particular computer has this at least on windows would be to simply go back to our desktop hold down the windows key and then press x while holding down the windows key it's gonna bring up this little window over here we're gonna want to go to task manager and click on it it is then going to bring up this window go down to performance and here you're gonna see a bunch of tech mumbo jumbo but at the bottom it should say gpu when you click on gpu go over here and check if it says nvidia or amd if it says either there's a really good chance that this will run on your local machine at home. If you don't see any GPU and if it says Intel, your chances do unfortunately go down because you're probably running it on a laptop with an integrated GPU. At any rate, I do feel confident that a lot of you guys at home are going to be able to run this. If you can't, my recommendation to you is going to be Crea AI as that best free option. All right, guys, back to upscale, running entirely locally on my own machine. This is so exciting, completely free, completely open source. This app is really simple, and I think it lends itself well to beginners. We have two sections here, the upscale section and then the settings section. First option here is going to be batch upscale. This will upscale everything in the folder that you specifically select if you enable it. Starting off, I'm just going to leave batch upscale off. First thing we want to do is select our image that we want to upscale. Then we select a model of which they provide six solid models to pick from. I'm going to go over which ones I like best for which situations. And then they also have this double upscale feature, which is meant for particularly low resolution images. And then the output folder where your upscaled image is going to result. So let's go create an image with Midjourney V6 to then upscale. All right, going to do a pretty basic prompt here. Portrait photo, orange tabby cat who is a wizard. The tabby cat is adorned with a purple pointed wizard hat, a gold necklace with a green gemstone, and a matching purple cape the portrait photo is taken during golden hour in a mystical forest and then i gave it a specific aspect ratio midjourney actually generates pretty high resolution images so we should be able to feed this upscaler something pretty high res however of course to push the limits of this upscaler we're going to try that 16x upscaling mode with a very low resolution wow check it out guys i can't say i am not impressed with midjourney's performance got all of my main details right however it is a little strange that the cat's ears are poking out through the top of the wizard hat. Nevertheless, we'll go ahead and grab our favorite image. For me personally, it is this one. Now, Midjourney does have its own upscaling, but of course, this uses up your Midjourney fast hours. And a lot of image generators, such as Dolly 3, for example, have zero upscaling at all, and we will try Dolly 3 later in the video. But I'm going to upscale this both with the subtle and creative Midjourney upscaling so we can compare it directly to our entirely free AI image upscaler that we have run 
running on our own machine at home. Here's the original image for reference. It's definitely high resolution, but if we get up close, you can literally see, you know, the individual pixels on the cat's whiskers and such, and his face doesn't have a lot of detail. Let's go ahead and toss that now into upscale. Gets brought right into the center. Step two is select a model. As I mentioned earlier, there is six different models you can actually pick from. Most of these say general photo, and then there's just one for digital art. They can always add more models to this, mind you guys. So as new AI upscale models that are open source come out, they can get added into here. We'll talk more about that later. All of these models honestly do a pretty good job. My favorite so far has been Ultra Mix Balanced. So we're going to stick with that for now. Then you have to select an output folder. I made a specific folder for this, and I recommend you do the same. All right, now all we have to do, guys, is actually press the upscale button. And it does tell us the original resolution of our image and what it will actually get upscaled to. So in this case, it's taking a fairly low, like, 1 megapixel photo and upscaling it to a 4K one 4 megapixel photo. That's pretty significant, and this is actually larger than the upscaling that you get from Magnific AI right out of the box. And you can see it actually does load pretty quick. I mean, depending on your graphics card, it's going to take different amounts of time. But we do have an image here, and I gotta say, the upscaling is pretty incredible. Let's get a more zoomed-in image. As you can see, we can zoom all the way to 200%. Here is the original, and then there is our upscaled one. Lots more detail in the image as a whole. You can see all the fine grains on the top of the wizard hat there. The whiskers are nice and sharp. Maybe the whiskers are a little too over-sharpened. The leaves and the fur, though, look really, really nice. It's an impressive upscaler, especially for being entirely open source, free, and running on your own machine at home. You can also see it managed to keep the background nice and blurry as well, and maybe it even added a little bit of extra film grain. Oh no, that film grain was from the original mid-journey photo. Wow. It actually smoothed out a lot of that film grain, but it kept it in, which is really nice to see. That's not easy for these upscalers to do. So that's a really solid upscale. I'm going to show you guys real ESR GAN, which is the first one that pops up as well on this same exact image. You can see this is also a very good upscaler. I think it smoothed the background out just a little bit too much for my opinion. Pretty much entirely removed the grain from the background. And we could talk about which upscalers are best for which situations as well. They also have a Remacri. This one also does a really nice job. I think this actually did a better job on the whiskers than Ultramix did. However, I think the cat's fur itself looks a little bit worse maybe but it did manage to keep a lot of that you know realistic photo grain that mid journey provided in the original in the actual background which is impressive they also have this ultra sharp one which is very similar to the remockery one I could kind of go either or with those two I think maybe this one's just a little bit worse honestly but maybe it did a better job with the fur not so sure and then they also have this digital art one which is last here obviously this is not digital art this is a real photograph so this one does a lot of this smoothing. It's not really meant for photos at all. So you're going to want to avoid this one if you're using real photos, but if you're using digital art, it might actually lend itself very well. Anyways, let's compare those to the Midjourney upscales, then to Magnific and Korea. All right, so first up, obviously the image over here on the left-hand side is going to be our original Midjourney generation, not upscaled at all. And then over here on the right-hand side is our first Midjourney upscale. The Midjourney upscaler is not bad, but of course it does use up your mid-journey hours. The resolution itself is not very high, meaning it doesn't upscale it by that much, only about two times. So right off the bat, you're not going to get the same level of resolution that we're getting from our free local running upscaler. This is the light mid-journey upscaler. I'm honestly seeing a little bit too much detail, I think, too much over sharpness going on in a lot of this image. The eyes look really nice, but I think the fur, while it's pretty good, is just a little bit too over sharpened. And I think we can see the same thing with the top of the hat as well here. I mean, the original image does show some sharpness, but, you know, this is taking it a little too over the top, in my opinion. And this is actually even worse on the creative upscale. You can see everything is just way too over sharpened in this. Like, we can actually see lines around the whiskers themselves because it's just too over sharpened. And there's even some weird artifacting going on with the background on this, making those film grains look really, really weird. Now, compare this mid-journey upscale to one of the local upscales we did, and you can see a huge difference. The fur on the cat's face looks a lot more natural. As mentioned earlier, we get a higher resolution, but the whiskers, for example, aren't really too over sharpened at all. The eyes honestly still look really, really good, especially those little reflections you can see in the cat's eyes. The wizard hat looks pretty decent as well. Maybe not perfect here, but I think it's very true, at least to the original. Maybe there's a little bit too much smoothing out of the grains in the background, but upon switching to 
to the mid journey upscale i think i prefer this a lot more than this i mean take a look at the difference here guys this is the mid journey upscale right here and then this is our local upscaler which one would you prefer honestly and this is entirely free let's put this one up to the test now in comparison to magnific ai which again is 40 bucks a month for only 200 upscales by the way guys for magnific i understand that it has different settings that you can manipulate to get different outputs out of magnific the settings that were used here was just the default prompt from mid journey optimized for films and photography one creativity one hdr and six resemblance essentially these settings are more or less in favor of magnific than anything else all right guys so here on the left side is our magnific upscale and on the right side is our local upscaler there are definitely some differences to note here some good things about magnific and some bad i honestly think that magnific did do a little bit too much over sharpening as well kind of the same trap that mid journey fell into like i think the whiskers look a lot better on our local upscale than they do on magnific however magnific does have this ability to kind of reimagine the fur on the cat's face making it look a lot more realistic kind of reinventing it it did a little weird hallucination on the nose which i'm not a huge fan of and it's less true to the original but i do think that the fur looks a little bit better and the eyes look more realistic as well however get super close up to the eye here and you'll notice something yep magnific does not upscale as high as our local upscaler we actually have two times the resolution with our local upscaler than we actually get with magnific if we zoom in you'll also notice that there is a lot of that preserved film grain with magnific this is something that it does very very well and obviously that all gets smoothed out with our local upscaler but looking at this as a whole while there are definitely some improvements with magnific that you don't see with your local upscaler i think that the local upscaler is good enough to the point where it just being free and running locally on my own machine makes it way more worth it than magnific which costs at a minimum 40 bucks a month that is not a 40 dollar a month improvement by any means in my imagination and just for gits and shiggles here is Korea ai on the left hand side with our local ai upscaler on the right and you can immediately see the problem with Korea ai and compared to our local upscaler it just can hallucinate too much it's definitely not as good as magnific in a lot of scenarios it is free but so is our local upscaler and it doesn't hallucinate a cat's face on its own chest and also our local upscaler is a lot faster yeah that's kind of the risk with these upscalers that magnific or Korea use is it has this propensity to hallucinate things that just should not be there in the first place and it will take you more time to get a good upscale where we can get something honestly really really good out of our free local upscaler instantly all right guys now i want to take a little bit of a deeper look at the actual upscaler app that we have presented and show you some really cool unique features about it so we've already been through how to do a basic upscale they do have a settings tab though they do have a ton of different themes you can pick from which is pretty awesome i love to see like interesting little tweakable themes like this it just kind of allows you this level of customization that you otherwise wouldn't get and if i move my head over here you can see we actually have the option to save our image as a png or a jpeg i don't know why you wouldn't save as a png but they've also got this don't post process image button this is only for use if you're having issues with file size or color banding and then they've also got image scale so if you only want to do a 2x upscale let's say you already have something pretty high res then you could do two or three or four they also have image compression this is experimental i'd honestly just leave this off the ability to save your output folder over time overwrite a previous upscale and then they have this gpu id thing which apparently can improve your performance on windows i personally have haven't noticed any issues but here's where things get really interesting they have a add custom models folder so you can download any open source upscaler and just plop it right into this little custom models folder making this thing really bulletproof for the future guys what this entails is that if we get an upscaler that's better than magnific in the future all we would have to do is download it and then put it into that little upscaler folder and we could use it through upscale how cool is that free local AI upscaling is great, future proof 
free local AI upscaling is even better. Now, where does this upscaler fail and where does it really shine? Believe it or not, there are actual use cases where this thing can be flawless. Take this example. This is like a little vector image that I made with Dolly 3. You can see it's really clean. It's actually almost a perfect image, but it's just at a low resolution. If we want this to be higher resolution, we can plop it in here. We could honestly pick any of these. I'm just going to go with digital art because that's what it is. And you can see more or less this thing will just do a perfect upscale. It'll sharpen all your lines up. It'll retain all of the original color. It won't do any weird artifacting or anything like that. It's pretty much just perfection. So something really simple vector style images, it will be perfect with comic book art styles, graphic art such as this. You could just see it's absolutely a monster at this. For the most part, you can see it kind of smoothed the bottom textures out a little bit strangely there. Ooh, but you can see switching to a different upscale model rather than the digital art one did actually improve that bottom result quite a bit. So yeah, digital art and like vector stuff, this is where it shines the most. It can do perfection essentially in this area. Now, when it comes to photography, it really depends on how much detail and how good your original base photo is. Like this generation from ImageN2, it kind of butchers it a little bit because there's just not that much detail at all in the original to go off of. So this is where you're going to see an improvement with something like Crea AI or Magnific AI over the actual upscaler that runs locally. It really depends on your base image though. The more detail, the better this is going to work. Now here's where you're not going to see a benefit with this upscaler. That trend where people have been lately trying to reimagine old video games or images into something that's, you know, a cartoon video game character to real life. This is not what it's able to do. This is more of a reimagining an image to image than an upscaling. Technically, you could try to reimagine the image with something like stable diffusion for free locally and then upscale it perhaps that'd be a good video to do in the future let me know if you guys want to see that but yeah like a reimagining of video game scenes that is just not going to happen with this kind of local upscaler at least not yet not saying it's not possible in the future but for now you know you're not going to see this level of reimagining or quote-unquote magic upscaling with these local upscalers well everybody i hope you had a wonderful 2023 and here's to a 2024 that's filled with lots Lots of really great, helpful, useful AI advancements that benefit all of humankind. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and leaving a like. Check out the Discord server, check out my Twitter for the latest and greatest in the world of AI, and I'll see you guys in the next one. We've got a lot to talk about, so stay tuned. Goodbye.